give you the video afterwards so that you can go back and walk through it and produce it yourself. All right, so simulator ran. Here's the uh, JSON stuff that came back. All right, so we have crap. <laughs> right? yeah. So that's that's that. All right, so now let's go and start getting these pieces. So here, just to bring up where it connects into the coursework, I'll uh, show you here. So uh, here's what we just got from our uh, uh, our, our, our request. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go down here. Is this uh, calling that web service? Yeah, here we go. So um oh that's using swifty json that's the guy i told you you should use but we're not going to use that one initially yeah it's actually the course would go up a little bit more yeah. no and, and, and it, the next it, heading up there yeah, it's fine it, it, it's fine so we're gonna we're gonna use this guy right here all right so first we're gonna look at your json so this is what was returned down here so this guy right here is a json object so everything yeah. from that opening let me lift this up Everything I have highlighted there is a single JSON object. Now, inside of this JSON object, we have multiple name value pairs. Here's one name value pair. All right, so we have city, and city is equal to all of this stuff here. Okay, then we have this thing list. So this is the one they were telling you to get. So what's list? List is a collection of this stuff here. Okay. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do, and they, so the thing that they ask you to do is that you can get city. City is going to be a normal JSON object. Okay. So we can get the city's description. So let's go ahead and grab that first. And I'll show you those individual pieces. So I'll, let's, let's print it. And then we'll see the individual pieces. So let me go. Let's just kick this down so it's a little bit more organized. All right. So this guy right here displays the entire json object that was returned yes okay that's what that guy does so i'm going to steal this line okay and then we're going to do another line so this is entire json and then this guy is the city variable. So this is going to be response object at bucket city. So that this variable right here. Yes. Then we're going to get his description. All right. So first of all, it's telling us response object. This guy is a, well, when we get the city, he's going to come out as an any object question mark. Mm -hmm. So we're going to say, we're going to go ahead and tell it that that guy's a real dude. Yeah, we so, can trust it. Yep, we can trust it. And then it's telling us description, uh, value of optional, any object. So that's this dude right here. So response object is also a, he's not an optional. Yeah, he's not an optional. So it's description that must also be an optional. That's where, when I was messing with the other day, I had two exclamation points in a row after city. And I had never seen that before, and it kind of freaked me out, but it worked. All right, let me figure out why that's the case. Okay, it wants us to get it as an NS dictionary. That's fine. So that original guy is an NS dictionary. Okay, let's just do it that way. That'll make the most sense. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say let the JSON equal response object as an NS dictionary. So we'll get that guy initially. Let's get rid of this for a second. All right. And then this is going to say the JSON. not going to do it that way. We're going to do entire JSON is oh. the value of that Interpo guy. Interpolation. Yep. So I remember that vocabulary word. 
So we'll put it in there like that. That should give us the same output we saw before. So basically we're looking at the same thing. We're just yep. proving to ourselves that this dude in fact was an NS, di NS dictionary. Okay. okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say let the city equal the JSON at bucket city as NS dictionary because city is another dictionary. Okay, he's another normal plain Jane uh, object. So now we'll say the city dot description. All right, so here's our entire JSON. So we yep. have two different animals here. We have JSON objects are stored as NS dictionaries, as an NS dictionary. JSON arrays are stored as NS array. Those are the two animals we need to be able to work with here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the city here, let me just go ahead and I'm going to comment out that line right there so we no longer see the entire JSON. Sure. Now we should just see the stuff associated with city. Nice. We just have the stuff associated with city. Okay. Now, from that city, I can grab the coordinates, which is going to be another NS dictionary. That makes sense? Yeah, it's sort of a subset yep. of the JSON. But, but the important thing for us here is it's a curly brace. Got it. Okay, so dictionaries are represented, uh, JSON objects, which are represented as dictionaries, visually have curly braces. Okay. Okay, the other things have square brackets. So if we go back to this guy, and we'll see the list is a guy that has square brackets, I believe. Okay, so down here we have, well, yeah, it looks different here. So it's parentheses here. That's our arrays uh, in the NS dictionary representation. So NS dictionary represents um, a variable list whose value is equal to, since this has a parenthesis here, that's an array. Okay, so that guy, this is an array of NS objects. And, and so this is, if I call some JSON file as an NS object, as an NS dictionary. Like dictionary or dictionaries and parents or arrays. Correct. Yep. This is how NS dictionary represents JSON. That's a visual representation of how NS dictionaries represent JSON. So is it correct to say I'm going to call a JSON object downcast it's it six as an NS dictionary? Correct. Well, you know, actually, hold on. Let's let's let me re restate that. You're not downcasting it to an NS dictionary. You're turning it into what it already is which is an NS dictionary, okay? We are using AF networking here. Yeah. AF networking has this magical function called manager get, all right? And he gets the result of making a call to this URL. And what he gives you back is, among other things, he gives you this thing called an operation, and then he also gives you the important thing here is whatever the URL returned as a response. And that okay. response object is returned to us generically as an any object, okay? But in actuality, since we know that this website should give us JSON every single time, I mean, that's that's what that output, that's what that website returns. It returns JSON for us, okay? okay. Since that guy should give us JSON 100% of the time, we know that AF networking stuffs JSON content inside of NS dictionaries. So we're not okay. downcasting it to a dictionary. We're just okay. we're just letting ourselves know that it actually was a dictionary. Just and uh, um, AF networking had no way of knowing when it was written that we would request something that was going to return JSON. Okay. So this could just be a string if it was uh, not JSON information coming back. That that kind of makes sense. Yeah, it could be anything, but it's going to try to turn into a dictionary. In this case, generically, it could be anything. In this case, we absolutely 100% know that that string right there, I'm going to go to, I'm just going to open this up on a web page. You don't even need to go to That's all right. I know what it'll look like. That's the web page. That's JSON. Yeah. 
So we blow that up in there. We can see that when we get to list, notice how list starts with a square bracket. Okay. Because that's a dictionary. What we're looking at here is real. What we're looking at here is actual JSON syntax. Okay, wait, when you just said, I thought something just conflicted for me that it's the a square bracket versus a curly brace. Square, bra square bracket is a JSON array. Okay. Yep. So a square bracket, if we're looking at real JSON, this has absolutely nothing to do with Swift. This has nothing to do with anything that we're programming. JSON is a predefined data representation language. And in JSON, we have this specialty dude here, square bracket, that says that this variable name list has a value, and that value is an array. Okay. And that array goes from here all the way to here. And arrays in JSON are collections of objects. Here's the beginning of our first object in there. So anytime we see a curly brace in JSON, that's the beginning of a JSON object. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, AF networking is the tool that we're using to work with JSON data. Well, it's actually the tool we're using to work with um, websites, to talk to the Internet over HTTP. Mm -hmm. We just happen to give it this URL and we can see right here is evidence that this URL returns for us JSON. Okay. So AF networking chooses to deal with JSON in terms of NS dictionaries and NS arrays. Those are the two, two components in Swift that it uses to represent this stuff. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so anytime we see an object that is like city, that's a variable name, and its value is a JSON object, like this. So anytime mm -hmm. we see an object, we, uh, uh, we're going to use a NS dictionary. JSON objects are represented as NS dictionaries. List is actually an array. It's a, this is an array of JSON objects. So we store an NS array uh, for list, which will contain a, a, a collection, an array of JSON objects. So let's go back here and continue to walk through this, and you'll see how we kind of break it apart. Okay, so this was the entire JSON. This was just the city. Okay, we saw that. So we see that the city right here, this variable, has a value that's a JSON object. So in our world, in Swift, that's going to be an NS dictionary. So we okay. get it as an NS dictionary. All right, and that gets us the city. Next... If I want to go within this, I can get the coordinates. Also, sure. an object. So that's a NS dictionary. So we can say, let the chords equal the city at position chord. Hmm as an NS dictionary. What the, what the correct uh, word for chord inside my dictionary? It's, the, um, it's like the key value pair, right? Is, that, is, is chord the key? Chord would be the key, yep. Yeah, okay. This is a key, city is the key. So within our entire JSON object, we have a key city whose equals whose value is this JSON object. All this stuff. Within yeah. city, we have a variable named chord, a key named chord, whose value is equal to this JSON object. Got it. Okay. So this will be the coordinates. So we'll just go ahead and just print out those. So notice I'm keeping my dictionary. So we have those individual pieces, but I'm only printing out the next pieces. So we'll see now just the coordinates, except I need to print out the chords, not the city. So this is going to give us the dictionary that's holding just those guys. Latitude and longitude. Yes. Okay, see that? Yeah, works. All right, then finally, so let's say we wanted to get the actual latitude and the actual longitude from that guy. To now, take it down another level. Yeah, but we, we don't have to get another dictionary or, or another array. We're already at the bottom. Now we just have to get the value out of this dictionary. So now I can say print lat is that lon is that 
And what is Lat going to be? Lat is going to be, oops, sorry, the chords at position Lat. Hmm. And longitude will be the chords at position Lon. So that should get me the 51.5 and the negative 0 0.1 printed to the screen. So that's where we've kind of gone down the line and extracted just that single piece. Yes. All right, so let it cook here for a second. It should pop up. Do, do, do. Are you still there? I am. Okay. I was hoping my internet didn't die. So <laughs> I'm just going to try running it again real quick. <laughs> have you been having connection problems? No, I'm just at a university and they perpetually have, have connection problems. <laughs> Luckily, I'm in our technology wing and we rarely actually have connection problems. Just huh. this thing is loading very slowly. So while that's still cooking there, so yeah, that's all right. So, I, I know where that's going. Okay, so you know, as we as we do that, that that's what happens. Um, and this was all in what view did load? Okay, yeah. So that that connection was taking a little bit longer than it should have probably. Well, I think I mean you've we've now got me to a point. I mean, I'm over the hump with the thinkful curriculum for this mm -hmm. it's, it's it making more sense so let's just let's just write the code for the list part so let's per pretend that guy's working for whatever reason it's not connecting um i can just start it again here in a, in a few minutes let me i'll just kill off my my simulator i'll rerun it um, but while it's trying to cook that let's look at list so now let's say this is back to our original object. Sure. So instead of city, I want to go ahead and get list. All right. But list is an array. Okay. So we come in here. There we go. There's our latitude and longitude that finally popped up. And then if I run this, we should get our actual latitude and longitude. And there we go. There's our actual latitude and longitude. They're both optional. So I would actually have to do that and that to get the real values out of those just in case they weren't there in the dictionary but we knew they were because we read them that makes sense okay, okay. All right. so now that's those couple print statements so now let's go down and let's get another piece so we're going to say let the list the list equal the json Okay, remember, all the JSON is, is our original variable cast to a dictionary. Just makes it convenient for us to work with. Yep. Instead of us having to do all this as exclamation point dictionaries, blah, blah, blah. So now we'll do the JSON get bucket list, that guy. But because he's an array, we're going to get him as an NS array. And you only know he's an array because you recognize it in the syntax. Correct. Okay. Yep, we have to know, we know that JSON has a defined structure. JSON is a collection of name value pairs where the names are always strings and the values are either strings, objects, numbers, or arrays. Okay, I just okay. described JSON. That's the entire definition of JSON. Okay, so we know what JSON structure looks like. Now, we're specifically looking at the JSON structure that was given to us by this weather thing. So we have to know that list is an array or that city was an object. We have to know that aspect of it. Yeah, we have to understand the JSON that's being returned. Correct. In order to parse it, to piece it out. Got it. All right. So we'll go ahead and get the list as an array. Uh, and just as a reminder to myself here, let me go ahead and print out uh, our original uh, JSON just so I can see it on here <laughs> so we can pull the next piece out. All right, so here's our original JSON. So I just requested the list, which is an array. 
Here's the first element of that array. That's a JSON object that is that has clouds and degrees and all that stuff. So, um, so let's let's see what is that. That's the first object. Um, Weather's kind of hanging out on there. Weather is another um, object in the another array. It's another array within this. And let me go and look at it over here. That's cool. I can read regular JSON a little bit better, I think, than what they're giving me there. All right, so here is our list. Uh, here is the uh, first object. Um, so first object has this date time followed by temp. Temp's value is another object right there followed by pressure, which is another object, or pressure just as a value, that's a number. Then humidity, which is a number. Then weather, which is another array. So actually this array only has one element in it. Another array? Or I thought the curly brackets were in a dictionary. Weather is an array. And arrays are always collections of uh, objects. So if I come okay, in- there's a square bracket, okay. Yeah. So if I come in here now, so what I'm telling you is back on this screen here, that even though length, or I'm sorry, length, even though a list, this guy right here, is an array, he actually only holds one value. Hmm. This guy right here is the it's value detailed. contained in there. Details. Yep, that's all one, one thing. So okay. if, I, if I come back in here and I just go ahead and I say, um, let's print, the list dot count, it should give me a one. So here we'll comment that out. Unless I'm misreading it, I think I only see one object in there. Yep. So it gives me a one. So even though it's an array, it's a collection of exactly one thing. <laughs> All right. So we're going to want to go ahead and get that one thing out of there. So that one thing that's in there is actually this thing. All right, it's this object right here. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that's in there. So we're gonna, um, I don't know, we're gonna just go through that list. So we're just gonna call it the list element. Uh, so let's go ahead and then say, uh, let the list element equal the list at bucket zero, which is the first element in that list, right? And we know it's the only element in that list as an NS dictionary, because that's what that guy is. He's an actual JSON object. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we have that JSON object. So now we can ask about DT or temp. Um, uh, if we want the temp, then we'll like to get the information for the day, the min, the max, the, the night. So if I want to get um, uh, uh, the very information for the temp, let's go and do that. So that's going to be this object, which is a dictionary, at position temp as a dictionary. Hmm. So come back in here. We'll say let the temp equal the list element at position temp as an NS dictionary. Okay, so that's going to be our dictionary containing all of this stuff right here. Everything that's left. Right there. Just that stuff. Right there. Okay. That is the value associated with this key. So key temp Got is it. value this guy right here. All right. So that I should be able to print out min, so max. Temp, temp is a dictionary, is a component of a dictionary within the array DT. Uh, no, the array is called list. Oh. And the first element of that array is this JSON object that starts right here. And that JSON object is a, is a dictionary. It's represented as a dictionary. Okay. And it has okay. a variable DT. It has another the variable array. called temp. List is the name of the array. Okay. Correct. All right. So now I can go ahead and I can ask, uh, I can ask what the, uh, the, the, the day's max temperature was. So, for instance, I can now go in and I can print... Max temp was the temp at position max. And we'll go ahead and 
say, trust me, it's there. And that, in this case, should give me that key. So that's going to be that value, 11.41. Unless it's changed since the last time we ran it, but this should give me... There's our 11.4. I'm always real hard on myself because through my studies, that it's tough to get the, like I said, the vocabulary to mm -hmm. stick. Yep, no, I get it. I just, I, I reread something the other day, I think like Wednesday, and the fact I know um, string interpolation, like I feel really good about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but, but like we talked about last time, all this stuff is just reps. Yeah, I mean, to be absolutely. honest, to be honest, right now, the thing I'm kind of angry about has nothing to do with you. I have no idea why somebody who had office hours could not help you with this. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I think it was time. It wasn't office hours. It was, uh, well, it was office hours, but it was front end office hours, front end and everything web development. And I went in and asked, his name was John, and he was great. I said, hey, I'm going to throw out some JSON questions for you. Do you want to go for it? And he said, sure, but I've never done SWIFT. So, like, he was looking at Xcode trying to help me out. Okay, I see. So he was at a dis disadvantage. He was at a disadvantage, and he also only had about 15 minutes. Okay, so, I got gotcha. you. Um, all right, so that gets us so that now we just saw we can extract something from temp. We can get the pressure. We can get the humidity if we want the weather. So now we can go ahead and get the weather. But weather is actually another array. So okay. Now we can go in. You see it here? Weather. It's okay, actually. Wait, but you said another array. Weather is a variable that lives within this object. So that's the single object that's inside of our list array. Yes. And one of those variables in there, it, one of the variables in the dictionary of that object is called weather. And weather's one value. The, one of the one in the dictionary of that object. Okay. So, and I see it, you know, this is one of these where I just need to, like, call a whole bunch of different JSON files and just try to break them down, you know. I, I can see the value in going through this exercise yeah. many times. So, right here, list. This is an array. How do we know it's an array? Because the very next thing is a square bracket. Okay? List contains... Well, okay, so you just said at weather, you said dictionary, but there's a square bracket mm -hmm. right after it. Weather is an array. But weather is a variable of the dictionary that is this guy. So we called it the list element. So what I have highlighted there in our code is called the list element, which is bucket zero of our list, which is an okay. array. So our, 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 our variable, the list, is an, is an NS array. And we've decided that guy only actually has one object in it. I have that guy highlighted right now. Yes. So that one object will be at bucket zero. And that one object is going to be an NS dictionary. So what I have highlighted right now is bucket zero of the of list, which is an NS array. But the guy I have highlighted is actually an NS dictionary because that's an object. That's what lives inside that array at bucket Understood. zero. Understood. All right. So now I'm going to take that dictionary and I'm going to ask for his value at position weather. Huh. Okay. The key value weather inside that dictionary has a value. And that guy's value is an array right there. That's the value associated with weather. And weather's value is inside square brackets. So it's an array. Ah, uh, okay. So just, awesome. Just, that's, what, that's what my notes say, so you must be right. Okay, so what I'll do right here, so we just printed out max temp just to see that. Um, but now what I can do is I can say let the weather equal the list element, so that's bucket zero of that, at position weather. Hmm. And that guy's going to come out as an NS array, like that. So we use weather as our key, and then it's going to return the array which had you know, all yep. those pieces. And we do that because weather's value is an array, what I have highlighted right here. Okay, so now I can ask for the main weather, for description, so from that dictionary, I can ask for the description of today's uh, weather. All right. let, let me try something right now. So then I'm going to jump ahead. The next item in this array is just a value of 10.95, and the key is speed. Correct. 
And then there's one other, two other items in the array. There's degree and clouds, and they just each have two value. other, two other items in this dictionary. Dictionary, damn. What I have highlighted right now yep. is the array associated with weather. That's an array within the dictionary. Correct. Yes. Yep. I got it now. You know what? I was, I just mixed up the square brackets. I was thinking square brackets were yep. dictionary. I got um, you. I got it. So if I want to get the uh, the description of today's uh, weather, it's going to say scattered clouds. So I'll just go ahead and I'll print out, print today's weather is the weather at bucket description. Do, do, do. This is really helpful, Mike. Good. That bucket description. Just like that. And this should get us oh, the weather. And I've done something horrific. Okay, so let me just back up here. So that's the placeholder. That's that. That's that. And we want to get it in the weather at bucket description you expect the argument of oh oh <laughs> that's funny I'm, I'm teaching this thing and I'm, I'm weather is an array so it happens to only have one element in it but I need to get bucket zero from that array all right, so weather is an array, but I need to get bucket zero of, of the array. So we're going to, to keep with our pattern here, we're going to say let. Oh, you have to define it? The weather, we don't have to define it. It's there, but the weather is an array. I'm trying to use it as a dictionary. It's oh, not, it's not okay. a dictionary. So I, if I want the weather element is going to equal the weather at bucket zero as an NS dictionary. Now I can say the weather element, like that. And that will get me the cloudy. And to show you that over here, weather is an array. And that array happens to contain exactly one object. So mm -hmm. in order to get that NS dictionary to request the description from it, I have to get bucket zero of the array. Okay. So I'll get the element, which is bucket zero of the array, as an NS dictionary, then I'll ask that element to give me his description, which should be whatever it was, scattered clouds. Yeah. Um, and there's the scattered clouds. All right. So we're running out of time. And this is, like I just said, this is fantastic. This is really helpful. I want to ask a question before we lose our last five minutes here. Mm -hmm. Good questions. One is, will you push this up to my Git for me? Uh, if you want me to push it to your Git, you're going to have to invite me as a contributor to your Git. Oh, that's right. Otherwise, I can push it to my Git and give you the link. All right. That'd be great. <laughs> that's fine. Um, and two is any input or direction on. So I'm going to work through this. And um, I think the, the Instagram thing will be much easier. Um any input on when I try to do my little one page Instagram scraper in, I'm thinking of trying to do it with Ruby and JavaScript. Is that good, bad? Try something else. What do you think? Uh, for the Instagram thing? Yeah. I mean, Ruby and JavaScript is fine. I mean, it, it's not going to maybe look as cool as an iOS app, but. Yeah, I mean, I think. I mean, the idea was to demonstrate that I'm understanding that, you know, here's the concept and it can be done in different languages that have different syntax. Um, I kind of could make this look decent. I'm pretty confident using a web browser, HTML and JavaScript. I should be able to get there. I mean, I know I can. It's just a matter of plugging away. How I would do that using Ruby, I'm like, I, I wouldn't even know where to start. So maybe I should just focus on the the browser first. Sure. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Do you think it's valuable for me to do? Uh, I would say yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. 
right, so let me do this. I'm going to dump that as a remote. I'm going to add a new remote. I'm about to push this up, and I'll give you the link here in a second. Thank you. All right, and remember, I did this one with Cocoa Pods. So I'll make sure I give you the pieces that you need in order to uh, make this work. That's the workspace settings. That's that. And that is that project settings. And then that's the pod file. That should do her. Okay, and we'll push this. So when you pull this down in order to actually get it to work, mm -hmm. Um, you'll need to go into the uh, d directory where this is after you pull it down and do a pod update. Okay. Otherwise, it won't have AF networking there because I'm not actually committing the AF networking. I'm committing everything that you'll need in order to build the AF networking. And I can show you that real quick. I can, I'll show you exactly what you have to do on my computer. It'll only take 20 seconds. Uh, let me just get this pushed real quick so I can actually show you that. Okay, so I pushed that, and let me give you the link so I don't forget it. Okay, so there is, where are you? Here, over here. All right, so there's that link to that GitHub. So now let me show you how I would uh, um, bring this down on my computer. Okay. okay. And remember, I'm still recording. So all this is uh, on video. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> and I'll upload the video to YouTube afterwards so you can see it. Okay. So I'm going to go into uh, um, uh, Xcode. I'll do source control. I'll do checkout. And I'll go ahead and just paste in the URL to that, that guy there. Sure. All right. And I'm going to, just for right now, I'm going to throw it on my desktop. Okay, uh, that happens sometimes. You just gotta try it again. It gave me a timeout for networking, security, something or other. Okay. All right, put it on the desktop. All right. Now it's on the desktop. Okay, so I'll go ahead and spread this out here. Um, so first of all, you notice that I have the two different projects in here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'm actually not in the correct project right now. I'm not in the workspace. So what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and close this and I'm gonna open up my terminal. Yeah. Okay? And I wanna move into my desktop so I'll do, uh, so I'll just get onto the desktop and what did, what did we call it? We called it, uh, what was the name of that? Swift, this guy. So I'm going to move into that directory. So basically move into the directory where your code lives, right yep. here. I'm, I'm right. comfortable with this. I'm pretty good. Okay. Terminal. Gotcha. And then I'll just do a pod update. As soon as I'm in the place where the pod file is, I'll do a pod update. And then this will fill in all the blanks for this project, which is done. And then I have this new thing called workspace. So I'll go ahead and just open that. So no longer the Xcode project. Now I open the workspace. And that has all the magic in it. Now you should be able to run it as if uh, I was running it. Okay. Yeah, th th this was fantastic. Very helpful. It's um, I mean, I understand what the JSON output is, but I've never dug into you know carrying it down like that. Sure. So I see something. One more thing to my, add to my list is to spend some serious time tearing down some JSON. Sure, um, uh, but all it is is reps. So yeah. the important thing is now you academically understand what those pieces are. Now it's just a matter of getting used to looking at it. You know, yeah, you're going to screw up. You're going to do what I did at the end there where I uh, was trying to use an array as if it was a dictionary. But by getting comfortable 
uh, working with those things, you'll be able to find your screw ups uh, mm -hmm. because you realize, that, oh, I was just being dumb. That guy's a dictionary, not an array. Yeah, yeah. You know, that that type of thing. So uh, you just need those reps of working with it. Okay. Can you think of anything else you'd like to see me do or go through regarding, you know, finding a job, not necessarily coding this week? Um, well, I mean, I guess, I guess I think that you're in a decent place when it comes to the jobs themselves. I think that, uh, um, if you're going to want to get a job that's going to take advantage of some of these uh, coding skills, uh, your first thing is for you to get convinced that you're better at the stuff than you think. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's going to be, uh, getting some reps in and getting, you know, some confidence, uh, believing in yourself where right now, you know, I think you're, you're, the wind is out of your sails a bit because you try to do the simple uh, swift thing from the coursework. and like, well, damn, I couldn't even copy the yeah. thing right. <laughs> so, um, you know, but I've gotten used to that, so it's no big deal. My problem is when I hit a wall, I don't have the patience or knowledge to work through things without getting some serious help. Sure. And that, that's a big, I got to get over that, just keep pounding on it myself, too. Um, right. But, do you have time but, for one more question before we cut off? Sure. Yeah. And this is from way from left field. Um, do you think, and I'm 45 years old, do you think I would be insane to go back to school and study computer science yes. just because I'm loving the learning so much? Uh, I mean, I would say you would absolutely be insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah let me see. Okay. 